He's getting older. Champagne room. Oh, hit the full button. But not wiser. I don't give a fuck what you think, bitch. This is the Lefty Show. Welcome, everybody, to The Lefty Show. I am your host, Lefty. Glad to be here with all of you today, Wednesday, the 26th of November in the year of our Spaghetti Monster 2014. Welcome one. Welcome all to The Lefty Show. Episode number 115 coming at you. I thank you all for taking time out of your very, very busy holiday weeks to uh, to join me and listen to the show. Day before Thanksgiving, I hope you all have got your turkeys or your cranberry, whatever it is that that is thing, and all the things that you plan to do uh, on Thanksgiving tomorrow, be sure to, I hope you all have a great Thanksgiving, spend time with family, or don't, screw them, right? They didn't support you in what you wanted to do, or maybe they did, then have a good time with them. Whatever your family dynamics are, I hope you have a great time on Thanksgiving, you have a lot of turkey, you have a lot of wine, or beer, or liquor, and you have fun, and you feel good. It's good. You feel good about yourself in North America, because outside of outside of North America, nobody really cares. Nobody, nobody, nobody really cares about, uh, about what we got going on here. Um, maybe the Native Americans do. Um, somehow, somehow I don't think they look too kindly. I don't think they look back with fondness on Thanksgiving because there was a feast. There was a feast between, I believe they were Puritans and a local Native American tribe. And they actually worked together. I mean, the the stories have been distilled down now to, to Disney-esque anecdotes. You know, they... They helped the the settlers plant uh, d- caught fish as fertilizer for the soil or for, for for the crops to grow so that there could be plenty of harvest and da 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 and it lasted three days and all this great stuff. But that, there was actually a feast of people that uh, white, I guess you would call them white Anglo-Saxons and a Native American tribe that lived in close proximity with one another, worked together, and then had a nice big feast. And then we gave them smallpox and took their land. And then, you know, and then a couple of them sided with the wrong people during this or that. And, uh, you know, bad times, bad times, uh, bad times. All the British, the British came around. We're like, hey, (laughs) hey, uh, other brown people, kind of weird. Like you, you're brown. Like we know, we know other brown people. We, you know, the sun never sets on the British Empire, so we've run into brown people, but we've never run into your kind of brown people. Hello, we're the British. Would you like to fight these people that have that have given you smallpox and are slowly taking your land? Trail of tears and all that. Somehow, I don't think the Native Americans look too fondly on the whole thing of Thanksgiving. I wouldn't. Damn white man coming to take my land and then putting me on salted earth. One of the most impoverished, some of the most impoverished places you will find in the world are Native American reservations. In the world. The poverty rate, the, 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 the rate of, the illiteracy rate on Native American reservations is, oh, blah, huh. we got a lot of aid workers going to Native American reservations, do we? That's, that's just something I just thought of. Native American reservations have are, are some of the most impoverished places in the world, and they are treated as sovereigns. Native American reservations like the, the Cherokee Nation, uh, the Iroquois, uh, uh, Iroquois Nation, Choctaw, all that stuff, they are treated as sovereigns. Third world sovereigns. The third world is here in America, and they exist in the form of Native American reservations. You see a lot of missions to Native American reservations, do you? A lot of Red Cross money going there. A lot of, oh my God, we've got to help. We've got to pull these third world nations up. Put them on the national stage. Put them on the global stage. Introduce them to globalization. 
Give them free loans that we'll end up forgiving in 15 years. Forgive the mass genocides and the this and the that and the other thing and the illiteracy rates and the raping and the pillaging and the... the, 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 the forgive all, all the bad things that they have ever done because we need to help them. You don't see a lot of that as far as Native Americans go. I wonder why. Because they don't all have casinos. In fact, that is very much a Cherokee thing. There are only a few Native American tribes that have gotten big into casinos. Now they're lo loaning you short-term money. And again, the, the Native Americans, the Native American tribes who made money, get earned, created capital by way of casinos, and then now plug that into short-term money lending, there's not a lot of, you don't see a lot of people protesting outside that. You don't see a lot of people going after the, what is it? I think it's like Big Sky Money or something like that. It's a, it's a completely stereotypical sounding name, but they thought it up. I didn't make them that name. I didn't do that. They're the ones that w they have those infomercials and they've got, you know, the, all the Native American imagery and, and the Native American kind of sound and the boom, 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 and that kind of stuff. And it's like, whoa, who did that? Because, you know, they have to sign off on that. Oh, here you go. So don't call you. Oh, it's racist. Well, they said it. They did it, man. What do you want from me? I'm not. It's racist to perpetuate. I got told yesterday it's racist to perpetuate stereotypes. Like, dude, I just posted pictures of the Ferguson riots. Well, it's right. It's stereotypical that all the people in those riot pictures are black. Well, it's not my fault. Talk to them. I didn't do it. Am I supposed to go through now and try to find riot pictures with white people in it? I mean, okay, but I, do, you, do do any of us have any, like, are we really going to try to BS about that? You could just as easily find pictures with a bunch of white guys rioting in Ferguson, Missouri. No, because in Ferguson, Missouri right now, not a lot of, not a lot of that going on. Talk to them, not me. But anyway, you don't see a lot of people. Oh, short-term money lending, it's evil, it's evil, it's bad, it's bad. We need to legislate them out of existence. You don't see the federal government because Cherokee Nation or whatever they are, a separate nation, they are in, in, in many, many ways a sovereign. You don't see the federal government saying, hey, Cherokee Nation, stop short-term money lending, which the, the railroading of short-term money lending is just, it's awful. It's awful. I've talked about it before on this show. And... It's really, and we'll, I, I can actually tr probably make this about Ferguson, Missouri, but it really is in the, the embodiment of, soci of a society in which nobody is responsible for their actions. That's what it is. The railroading of short-term money lending. You know, if you're a white guy that's in short-term money lending, you're the devil, but if you're Native American... Uh, but suffice it to say, in general, oh my God, short-term money lending, it's evil, it's evil, it's evil, 3,000% APR. Look at how evil that is. They're praying. It's predatory lending. How, the, how in the name of hell can you be a predatory lender? Somebody explain that to me. I have yet to hear one person explain that to me, how you can be a predatory lender. How, in, how can lending in any way be predatory? Do I show up on your doorstep with a bag with a dollar sign on it and a gun saying, here you go, take this money and pay me back, bitches? No. You go in there, you sign the papers, you show the the pay stubs from wherever you get wherever you work, and you sign or you give them your car title. And you go, here you go. And you go take the money and you sign. You go, yeah, money, all right. They, oh, no, they took my car. Well, <laughs> what the hell, bro? What do you think is going to happen? And here's the biggest thing. You'll see it a lot. I guarantee you, you've seen it. You didn't even know. You didn't even know the BS you were being sold when you saw it. Short-term money lending is so evil, so evil because of 3,000 APR, 4,000% APR, right? Annual percentage rate or APY sometimes they say. Oh, my God, look at that. They're charging you 4,000% for your $1,000 loan. For a 30-day loan, they're charging you 4,000%. And it's like, yeah, that's if you take 12 months to pay something that's supposed to be paid off in 30 days. If you increase your the time of payment, and you, if you increase the period of the loan by, uh, what would that be? That would be 1,200%. Okay? If you increase the period of the loan, let's say that you take a loan, short money, it's supposed to be a grant, and they want you to pay out 25%. So you're going to end up paying back $1,250 in 30 days, which isn't a bad deal. I, I need $1,000 cash now. All right, well, I'm going to want $250 back in 30 days. 
I'm going to want to be made whole, my $1,000, plus $250 for the convenience of giving you money now without collateral, and it's here, it's available, it's cash, good to go. That's the price. Okay. 30 days, the period of, periods of, 30 days is the period of the loan. One month. If you take a year to pay back a 30-day loan, well, of course you're going to get some ridiculous APR. Duh! Because the loan was supposed to be only 30 days. And you took, what would that be? That would be you took, I don't know, uh, 360 days. Ha, ha, math, good. It's good. See, still, still, still churn it up there. If you take a 30-day loan and turn it into a 360-day loan, of course you're going to pay out the ass. If you took a 30-year mortgage and then took 120 years to pay back a 30-year mortgage, what do you think the APR is going to be calculated finally? What did you pay back to the bank in interest relative to what you initially took out? Of course it's going to be ludicrous because you took 120 years to pay back a 30-year loan. What the hell are you doing? Oh, but it's evil. It's evil. It's evil. No, people need short-term money. And they they pay for it. They pay for the premium of short-term money. Okay, the loans aren't intended to be paid back over a year. They're not supposed to be. And and if you, going to get a 30-day loan or a short-term loan, have any doubt at all about your ability to pay it back, you shouldn't do it. You should not do it. Don't go in there. Don't sign the papers. Don't take the money. Don't do it. something else. Other than going to a third party, a private corporation for your short-term money, don't do it. Don't sign the papers because it costs money, short-term money, and you got to keep paying it back, paying it back. And if you have any qualms whatsoever, don't do it. But people still go, people sign, they take the money, they spend it, they can't pay it back, and they want the short-term loan forgiven because, oh my God, evil predatory lending. Nobody is held accountable anymore. Nobody is go- nobody is held accountable for their actions anymore in today's society. Nobody. Talking about Ferguson, Missouri and the riots, there are people that will honestly tell you on Twitter that the riots, the looting, the, not the protests, this is not what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the rioting, I'm talking about the people destroying property, setting things on fire and stealing things. There are people that will honestly tell you that it is excusable because oppression. Well, well, they've been oppressed and they distrust the police. So looting and breaking things and stealing crap is okay. Do you need? Do you really need any more to get it through your head in our society that we are a society in which you're not accountable for your actions anymore? If you are, if you are a member of a certain group, low. If you have a low socioeconomic standing in this country, hell, it's going to be it's going to be college students in a couple of years. It's going to be college students in a couple of years that aren't responsible for their actions. Oh, well, we've got to forgive that that 35 grand you took out, that 50, 60, 75 grand you took out to pay for school. Uh, meh, meh. Nobody's responsible anymore. You take out short-term money, it's it's not you know, it's not your fault, it's the fault of the evil predatory lenders. Oh, well, I took out a mortgage on my house on my, you know, $75,000 crap box in a crappy neighborhood. And now I own now I owe two hundred and fifty grand on something that's worth fifty thousand now. Who so who told you to sign the papers? Oh my God! Forgive me for my for the loan. Forgive the loan. Forgive the loan. Oh my God! Nobody's responsible anymore. You post pictures, people saying, "Oh, the the riots in Ferguson. They're about justice. They're about justice for Mike Brown. They're about the injustice of the lack of charges for Darren Wilson." Oh yeah, and then how do you explain? How do you explain the, the groups of people, the marauding gangs of people breaking into private businesses and stealing crap? What's that? What is that? Happened in L.A. in the 90s. Oh, we're upset about the lack of charges being, or the not guilty verdicts for the police officer officers in the beating of Rodney King. We wanted them guilty. They're not. Oh, this is about justice. Let's start breaking and stealing things. You say, well, no, that's that's inexcusable. Those people should be shamed. They are criminals. Oh, well, no, but you see, but you see, they're 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 they they've been oppressed and 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 they're just angry and they don't oh, oh, oh. Mike Brown's stepfather. There is video 
the night of the grand jury decision, Monday night, Mike Brown's stepfather with his mother was standing on top of some kind of pulpit, some kind of proverbial soapbox. Mike Brown's mother going on about how she never did anything except beat a group of people with pipes and stuff because they were selling Mike Brown shirts. But other than that, she never, and she's also uh, under investigation for felony uh, felony charges for that. But other than that, she didn't do anything wrong. And da, 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 da. And then she starts crying, understandably, because it's her son, regardless of whether she's a criminal, regardless of whether her son is a criminal, it's her son. And okay, all right, that's that's awful, you know? And And right or wrong, she has convinced herself that this man, Darren Wilson, is a murderer and the the state of Missouri is saying, no, we're not going to we're not going to bring um, that kind of justice to, Dar- to Darren Wilson. It's, it's a very moving thing and she's very upset about it, rightfully so. From her from her men- from her standpoint, from her with her mental capacity, she, she has convinced herself of all these things. These things are all very true to her. You will never get her to admit that Mike Brown maybe committed a crime that day. Mike Brown assaulted a police officer and then tried to continue assaulting a police officer and he got shot. You'll never admit that, ever. It is not reality. Even if we have proof, she would never, ever admit it. I guarantee you that. That is her reality and she was very upset. Then, then, standing up in front of her was her stepfather, guy by the last name of Head, not Luther Head, of Illinois basketball fame. No, no, no. Or maybe it is Luther Head. I don't know. Is he still? I don't think he's still in the league. Maybe he's down in Ferguson. Ugh. He stood up in front of the crowd. Large crowd of people standing 360 degrees around this group, around, around, around Mike Brown's family, assembled the assembled family members. The father was off, thank God, somewhere else, saying, please don't riot because that's stupid. The only one with a brain in the head is the actual father. But the stepfather stands up and says, let's burn this bitch down. Then continues, let's burn this motherfucker down. Wanted calling for a microphone. Apparently they had a PA set up. Now what? Hmm. Is that a crime? Is that, I don't know, inciting imminent lawlessness? Inciting a riot? When you stand up and you, it's in front of a group, a large group of people in the state of Missouri, it's six or more. When you engage and, and elicit Illegal actions from a group of six or more people, you have incited a riot. Definitely more than six people standing around. And he stands up and says, burn this bitch down. Burn this motherfucker down. That man's guilty of a crime. He has incited people to riot. Oh, well, he was he was upset. He was up, he was upset with with the outcome. And uh, no, no, no. nobody's responsible for anything anymore. These people are looting. They're criminals. Oh no! Well, they've been a. Oh, they've been a. They've been oppressed. They've been oppressed. No. And before, before you come at me and say, "Well, there, people, everybody have there been multiracial riots about sporting events." Yeah, those are stupid too. And those people are criminals. Duh. Those people should be held accountable for their actions. Oh my God! The Ottawa Senators. Let's go break stuff. No. You idiots. Listen, if you try to come at me with, oh, well, white people riot about stupid crap all the time, you're you're not going to find a sympathetic ear. These people, sports team or grand jury decision and everything in between, rioting isn't going to, isn't the answer. And spare me this oppression excuse. You know what ends, you know what ends oppression? Revolution. That ends oppression. There, what we did here in the 1700s in America was not a riot. It was a revolution against people that we believed to be oppressing us, oppressing our rights, oppressing our, our freedoms. That we And we revolted. We didn't riot. We revolted. Strategic acts of violence and attacking strategic assets. That's what we did. That was a revolution. What we saw in Kiev, in the Ukraine, earlier this year was not a riot. It was an armed revolution. That ends oppression. What I see in Ferguson is not a revolution. It's a riot. It is people under the guise of protests 
under the guise of willing protesters who will defend those members of the community breaking into other people's stores, private property, private businesses, and stealing crap. Liquor and televisions are not going to end your oppression. So don't give me this crap about oppression being an excuse for the riots in Ferguson, Missouri. It's not. It's not. Oppression would be an excuse for why are these people armed revolting against the police? Uh, oppression would be the, 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 the answer. Oppression is what we're looking for, which is what I said at the time. You want to go you want to go toe to toe with 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 the police now? If you believe they're shooting tear gas da 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 da. da. You want to go toe to toe? Fine. You want to end oppression? There are ways to do it, my friend. Breaking into liquor stores eh, not it. Stealing bottles of wine not going to end your oppression. Walking out with that brand new LCD TV or those new studio monitors not going to end your oppression. So, well, you know, uh, uh, we need to stop with this excuse making. People need to be held accountable for their actions. And I and I want and I'm talking to you now protesters too. You need to be you need to be held accountable. You need to be held accountable for the people you are protecting. Oh, it's a don't lump us in with the rioters. No, I am going to lump you in with the rioters because they are part of the community that you are protesting on behalf of. You are protesting on behalf of the community that protested the rioters. That's who you're standing up for. That's who it is. Oh, the injustice. Injustice for Mike Brown. Well, it's about injustice for Mike Brown, actually. Uh, okay, what about his criminal mother? The mother who rolled up with, I believe, two cars of people with pipes and other weapons to beat people and steal money and merchandise from those that were selling Mike Brown t-shirts this summer. You standing up for that? Because that's who, oh, we're about supporting the family. Oh, really? The family that commits felonies? That family? The family that will, the stepfather will stand up and say, let's burn this bitch down, inciting a riot? That's what you're standing up for. You have to answer for that, too. I want to know, I want to know how you differentiate between your protests and saying justice for Mike Brown and da 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 and all the things that happen as a result, as a direct result of that protesting. I want an answer. What do you? Oh, oh well, we don't, we don't, uh, we don't like to. So we don't, we don't condone that. We don't condone it. Yeah, but it still happens. It's very much like the Islam and radical Islamist debate all over again. No, of course not. All of Islam are radical fundamentalists who want to kill you. Of course, duh. But Islam still has that. Those imams still preach that. They still preach jihad. They still preach killing the infidels. They still preach it. Oh, well, we're, well, actual Islam doesn't really condone that. Okay, but I'm not talking about all of it. I'm talking about that. Explain that. Well, that's not real Islam. Then why are they, why do people still go there? Why are they giving money? Why this? Why that? Oh, well, uh, because here's why, because they're protected. Those imams, those people that, that are preaching jihad, fatwas, all that, they are protected. They are in power. They are given money. They are, well, we don't condone it, but we're not really going to do anything about it. It's part of Islam. It's not part of Islam, but it's so not part of Islam that we're going to continue to allow them to call themselves Islamic and preach Muslim, preach, preach the Muslim faith to, to, to Muslim people. We're still going to let that happen, but they're uh, not Islamic. No, 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 they're not part of Islam. Well, wait, what the hell? And yes, at some point you can't help but differentiate the two. Well, they're not part of Islam. Well, they say they are and they're killing people and you're not doing a whole lot to stop them. And you're not, you're not doing a whole lot to stop their creation. You're not stop, you're not doing a whole lot to, to to snuff out those catalysts all over the place as part of your religion. You're not doing a whole lot. I don't see it. I mean, eh, yeah. Not all of the Catholic Church raped little boys, but guess what? The Catholic Church as a whole deserves to be condemned for the child rape. And we all accept that. Unless you're the, the fundamentalist Christian douchebag. Oh, well, that's not all Catholicism. Yeah, so what? You supported this thing. This thing, even though a small subset, resulted in 
serial child rape by many people. The whole needs to be punished. Everything needs to be punished. Everybody, the punishment needs to reverberate down to the smallest level to, of people, the lowest level of people going, oh, crap, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't throw my lot in completely with all these weirdos. Same thing with Penn State. All of Penn State, Penn State University, needed to be punished so that everybody got a shock value to the tune of, oh, crap. Maybe we shouldn't just let the football program do whatever it wants because they win football games. And we all deserve to be punished because we helped create a system in which the defensive coordinator and later a guy that had keys to the locker room and an office but wasn't really part of the team, I wonder why that was, was raping children serially, serially, I think, eh? serially, eh. serially raping children. The whole of Penn State needs to be punished. Everybody needs to understand you are helping create this, whether by cognitive dissonance, whether by negligence, or whether by active, eh, I don't want to talk about that. So yes, Ferguson protesters, the whole that is justice for Mike Brown, you all need to be made to answer for the shopkeeper who has to clean up. The shopkeeper who was originally robbed by Mike Brown. You all need to answer for that. You all need to have a, you all need to have, take a little, a sharp breath, have a little sobering moment where you go, oh, okay. You all need to understand that when you support Mike Brown's mother, you are supporting somebody who is likely going to be charged with a felony because she incited a group of people to attack another group of people and steal their crap. And the stepfather is on camera actively trying to start a riot. And not the song either. Not the good song. Let's start a riot. A riot. Not that. No, like burn this bitch down. That's what you're supporting. You need to answer for that and keep that in your head. Because that's what you're supporting. That's what you are reinforcing to a certain extent. And I got to tell you, you know, you the more and more I read the evidence about the the... The grand jury decision. The evidence has been leaked by, uh, or not leaked, but released slowly by the prosecutor, uh, Rob McCulloch. Here's what happened. Okay, here's a, here's a Cliff Notes version of the evidence as I see it. And here's why I believe the grand jury decision was a good one. And we'll get to the grand jury thing and the you can indict a ham sandwich in a bit, okay? Because I failed to cover that last time. Here we go. The physical evidence supported Officer Darren Wilson's version of events. Officer Darren Wilson's version of events did not completely match the physical evidence, but that is to be expected. There is a little bit of fudge factor when you're talking about humans recounting human events. There, th that's just that's inherent to our very nature as flesh and blood beings. We're not computers with binary memory. In fact, I don't even think we understand memory fully yet. But suffice it to say, the physical, the physical evidence from the coroner's report to the blood trails to the crime scene at, at large to uh, the forensics, ballistics, all that stuff, it matches up with Darren Wilson's version of events. Mike, he stopped Mike Brown for whatever reason, whatever was said. Now, now the, the more analog things about what was said to whom and when and with what, you know, uh, vigor, we'll call it, that's, that's not borne out by, by physical evidence at all. And it can't be because, you know, it wasn't recorded by, uh, by body cameras or, or dash cams or anything. But the physical evidence, what we can, what, what we can all agree on matches up with Darren Wilson's story. He stopped Mike Brown, told him to get on the street. He said, no, there was an altercation. It eventually resulted in an altercation, a physical alter altercation that took place in equal parts inside the cab of the cruiser and outside in that, on that Ferguson, Missouri street. It resulted in physical altercation that resulted in contu facial contusions, one on his face and on the back of the skull of officer Darren Wilson. And two shots were fired inside the vehicle. One of them hit Mike Brown. Blood splatters on Darren Wilson's uniform and inside the car. Two shots fired. Then, and one of the, the, the other shot hit and broke, I believe, the rear panel 
of glass of the SUV cruiser. That also borne out by the evidence. Then Mike Brown started to run away. Blood trails going one way. Then there's a blood trail further down the street, further away from Darren Wilson and his cruiser than where Mike Brown's body was found, indicating, just like Darren Wilson said, Brown turned around and proceeded toward the officer. Now, what speed? We don't know. Don't know that. But the physical evidence matches up with Darren Wilson's version of events. Also, eyewitness testimony, certain eyewitness testimony, matches up with Darren Wilson's version of events. The ver- the eyewitness testimony that many people like to come down on, talking about Dorian Johnson, and oh my God, look at this. These people say this happened. He had his hands up. Hands up, don't shoot. Those people either contradict, phys- are contradicted by physical evidence, which we, we is above repute, unless you've got something that I don't know about, or, or, they were eventually forced to say that, yes, they, they felt pressure to conform their stories to a certain narrative. Some even admitting that they didn't see some of the things that they originally said. So what we have is the evidence presented before the grand jury sides with Officer Wilson. Officer Wilson's accounting of events or recounting of events. The physical evidence does. Darren Wilson's testimony matches up with the physical evidence. Some eyewitness testimony matches up with Darren Wilson and thus physical evidence. And the other the other eyewitness testimony, they're fighting amongst, amongst themselves, contradicting each other, being contradicted by physical evidence. And some people are just plain old admitting that they lied, don't remember, or didn't see what happened, and they just made it up because that's what they feel they had to say. Now, I ask you this. Forget for a moment the indictment. Oh, you can indict a ham sandwich if you want to. Think about what you say. Think about what people are saying when they say, well, you can indict a ham sandwich as a condemnation of the prosecutor in this case. What they are saying is that they are mad at the prosecutor for not ignoring evidence and blithely proceeding with felony charges for murder against a person, against a citizen. Regardless of his standing as a police officer, Darren Wilson is a citizen of the United States of America. And people are mad that a prosecutor did not ignore evidence and massage evidence that a jury would likely see and go, oh, you know, that sides with what he says, and blithely continue on with, with a felony charge for murder. That's what you're saying. Do you really want to live in that system? Is that a system you want to live in? Where if the public, for whatever reason, does not like you and does not like what you have done, a prosecutor will ignore exculpatory evidence, actively ignore exculpatory evidence, and actively call or not call witnesses simply to procure an indictment for a felony against you. Is that, is that a system you want? Is that what you want? Or do you want a system in which the prosecutor will say, look, my job is to determine whether my client, the state of Missouri, has a case. I don't get to decide the evidence. I don't get to decide this or that. I am presenting the evidence to this supposedly impartial panel of people Does my client have a case? And if it does, if these people rule that my client does have a case and they proceed with the charging instrument, then I go full bore. Then it's my job as an attorney to represent my client, the people of the state of Missouri, the sovereign of the people, the sovereign state of Missouri, and thus the people. And I will go forward then. But do you want a system in which from the very, the very first moment from the word go prosecutors are actively trying to produce arbitrary charging instruments, charges, and as uh, as a result, convictions. Do you want that? Because that's what you say when you say, "Oh, well, you can he could indict a ham sandwich, but he didn't." So mm. you're asking you're asking somebody to arbitrarily charge somebody with felony murder. Why does that sound good to anybody? 
Why would that sound good? Wouldn't you want a system in which you are given every possible chance to not have to go through and put on a defense against a felony murder charge? Wouldn't you want that? Oh, like, come on. Like, the evidence says this. Well, we'll go, we'll see at trial. But at trial, I'm one wrong move away from the gallows. At least let the people, let us some jury decide whether there is enough evidence to even charge me because I don't think there is. Don't you want that evidence, all the evidence presented to the to the people, to the jury, and the, the grand jury says, well, oh, no, yeah, nothing here. You serve a real purpose. The system of justice, our system of justice, is better served by grand jury proceedings like what happened with Mike Brown. That better serves our system. But but because people oh well I don't I don't I don't like I don't much care for that I I think I something I've decided that this is wrong have just up and decided well charge people with a, just charge them with a crime charge them with anything put them on trial for his life because that will satisfy that will satiate my outrage let's do some news. All right, we are going to do a little bit of uh, some quick news today. Haven't done so, done so in a while on this show. This is from Al Jazeera America. Walmart workers plan Black Friday strike. For the third Black Friday running, America's largest retailer is expected to face labor protests at late locations across the country. Workers and supporters affiliated with the union-backed labor campaign, Our Walmart, say this Friday will be their biggest strike Yet, our Walmart first burned onto the scene two years ago when it used Black Friday, the biggest shopping day of the year, to launch an unprecedented nationwide strike against Walmart. It's the news with Lefty. The group originally demanded that Walmart pay all employees a base salary of at least $25,000 per year, but has since joined with striking fast food workers in demanding at least $15 per hour. Workers affiliated with our Walmart claim the retailer pays so little that some employees don't even have the means to feed their families. The campaign also has filed legal complaints accusing Walmart of illegally retaliating against strikers, sometimes by firing them. As with our Walmart's first major action in 2012, this year's Black Friday protests will not be a typical strike. Many of those picketing Walmart, perhaps even most, will be outside supporters of our Walmart campaign, not store employees themselves. Those employees who do walk off the job will likely do so for just one day, Yet our Walmart has said that their prior work stoppages are legally protected strikes, and the National Labor uh, Relations Board, the NLRB, has agreed. Strikes over wages and working conditions or over an alleged ULP or unfair labor practice, such as illegally retaliating against workers, are protected by federal law. Uh, Cantair Devant, a Minnesota-based customer service manager for Walmart and our Walmart member, told reporters on a recent conference call that she had just recently started the process of applying for food stamps because her wages are so low. And I say this, I bring this story up because I don't know if I'm going to have a chance to talk with you guys until Black Friday. For those of you that don't know, Black Friday, after the day after Thanksgiving, is the biggest shopping day of the year in America. Everybody goes out to try to get deals. I don't know why it started. I, there's probably some interesting literature as to why. I think it's actually just a gigantic cascade and avalanche of um, of of uh, stores trying to outdo other stores. Uh, but everybody goes out. You know, you eat turkey on Thursday, and then you go out on Friday, and you try to buy Christmas presents. You know, Christmas is about a month away, and you you go out and try to get yourself some Christmas or uh, Kwanzaa presents, what, what, what have you. And Black Friday is huge. It, it doors opening at it, what was, you know, six in the morning, then five in the morning, four, then midnight, opening at midnight Friday morning. Now some stores are staying open for 48, 36, 48 hours starting on Thanksgiving and working workers to the bone and all this stuff, long hours, holiday, you got to get, Sometimes you might get holiday pay or they'll take on seasonal workers so that they don't have to pay you overtime or holiday pay. That's the whole point of seasonal workers. Um, and while I am a person who has partaken of Black Friday deals, gone out to retailers, and um, may again this year, 
I got to say, I understand the plight of those that will be picketing. And I understand why they do it. And I think it's a really good cause. Because if the guys at Walmart, if I go to buy a TV at Walmart, if I go to buy a TV at Best Buy, if I knew those people were earning a living wage, I would be happy. I would have no qualms whatsoever about the stores opening, you know, oh, this guy's been here since midnight or 6 o'clock yesterday. So, yeah, but the guys are in 15, 20 bucks an hour and double time, overtime, holiday pay, time and a half, whatever. You know, he's getting paid, compensated fairly for his time. But much of the time, most of the time when you're out Black Friday, those people you see, yeah, they might be earning to holiday pay, which is time and a half. What's time and a half of $8 an hour? Still only $12 an hour for one day. Uh, no, that's that's wrong. And I support these, um, our Walmart activists, and I support, I will support them if I do go out. I don't know how, and I, I don't know if, if there's anything, any meaningful way I can support them other than giving them words of encouragement or not shouting them down and oh, get, get, we're going to go to work or something. You know, so we want fair way. I say, I understand. I want fair wages for you too. And I'm willing to pay more for these items that I'm about to buy so that you can have a fair wage. But until that happens, I still need to get crap for Christmas. I'm sorry. And that's, that's part of the deal. That, that's part of the crappy part about it too, is that, the world doesn't stop because there's an injustice. Because we're talking about actual injustice now, not the justice system working and people being pissed about it. The actual injustice of people giving a full-time labor commitment to a private corporation and not being compensated fairly. Not being compensated enough to support themselves. Because you can't support yourself yourself on 8 eight, nine, even $10 an hour in America. It's just not going to happen. But just because there is that injustice, just because the guys that I'm going to see at Best Buy, H.H. H. Gregg, uh, J.C. Penney, the mall, wherever, just because I know they're not making a fair wage, I still have Christmas presents to buy. The world still continues to turn the, as the world turns. And I think, you know, because I know some people might say, the best way to support them is to not go out that day. Support the workers by not going out. And I say, okay, but, you know, while the, the, it's, it's, it's nice in the theoretical sense, the injustice of it all, and we need to do something about this, I still need to buy Christmas presents. Or I still need to buy groceries, and Walmart is the only place closest. Or is the closest place. Or Walmart is the only place that I can afford. So yeah, it's an injustice that the Walmart employees are getting crapped on. But I can't do anything about it. I can't do anything about it besides saying, yeah, pay them more. But other than that, I can't. What am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to starve myself so that other people may eventually someday get a little bit more money, cash in their pocket. And I, I think it's better, and I, I guess I'm rationalizing here, I think it's better to just go understand, go, go knowing full well, yeah, man, you're getting screwed, I'm sorry. But I need to, uh, this, this, this has to happen. And when the day comes, when the day comes that you're getting paid more and the prices go up, even though they don't really have to, and the prices go up, I will pay that so that you can have that extra cash in your pocket. I think that's a good... Not necessarily middle ground, but a good place in between, well, just don't go on Black Friday to support the workers. We are one. We are united. Or, ah, screw them. Let's just go because consumerism. Cheap prices, cheap prices, cheap prices. I don't know. Let me know what you think. You can hit me up on Twitter. Follow me uh, at Lefty643. Let's, uh, let's bring it up. Woo! Another great episode of The Lefty Show. I thank you all for joining me. I had a great time putting on the show for you. I hope you had a great time listening. Thank you to everybody for watching, liking, favoriting, subscribing on YouTube, youtube.com slash lefty. I did not do the propers again today, did I? 
Subscribing on YouTube, youtube.com slash leftyox is where you can find the show in its YouTube formation. Thank you to everybody for donating. I'm raising.com forward slash 643 productions is where you can do that. And thank you to everybody that has been sharing the show, helping the podcast grow by sharing it with friends, family, and coworkers. I greatly appreciate it. This Thanksgiving, share with all your friends, all your family, share the show. You can find us wherever you get your podcasts for your PC, tablet, or mobile device. Just search The Lefty Show, Android, iOS. It does not matter. You'll find us there. You can download all the episodes at your leisure. Anyway, guys, that's my time. I got to get out of here. Thank you for joining. I hope you enjoyed. Enjoy your turkey day. Gobble, gobble. Catch you next time. I'm out. Bye. is totally absurd.